After the first case, now we are going for second case. He is a 64 year old male patient, normotensive, non diabetic, head stable angina with preserved LD function. Here you can see in the angiography, it revealed 80% stenosis in the mid LAD and uh, uh, circumflex artery also showing 80% lesion. So, our plan is to go for uh, stenting of LAD and LCX today. Now we go live. Hello everyone, are you able to hear us? Hipparin Pandar goes in. Hipparin Pandar, 50. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Can you hear us? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, very nice. Uh, well, you saw the films. Uh, Sanjay is with me and we are going to start. Uh, we have a, a six French access distal radio and we have an EBU three and a half. Uh, actually, go AP quarter first. AP quarter. So we have EBU three and a half in there and we have a run through wire. So you're not, do robotic. Pardon? you're not do robotic. Robotic, no. Pressure is good. Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. see. Are we Sine? Sine? Yeah. Sine? Sure, sure. Yeah, Sine. Yeah. Good, good. Please. Yeah, it'll be great if he can come. So, and then let's do one cranial picture then also. And uh, so we obtained distal radial access. Uh, it was not a very powerful pulse, but we still, Sanjay Bay was able to get it. You can see the LED, uh, little, you know, rather complex anatomy bifurcates Aro after cranial. that ectatic Aro area. Aro yeah. Cranial. Okay. Yeah, Aro cranial. Yeah. Aro cranial. Yeah. Okay. Let's do one Aro crane. We want to show you the LED as good as we can. So we're going to do a few more pictures mm. here. Ready? Yes. Good. Ectasia. Okay. So you okay. can see the LED. We are going to plan to do IVUS first and assess the lesion. Let's go AP caudal now and mm. we'll wire in AP caudal first. We also plan to do that uh, mid to distal circumflex lesion. Uh, the guide is sitting pretty well, pressure is good. It's a run through wire. So you angiographically at least appear Cranial? to have s at least more Cranial? calcification. Cranial. Eh? Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. so there's yeah. calcium as well as an aneurysmal sort of uh, dilatation, right? That is true. Puff so no, this not is a very nice guys. combination. I think. Yeah, it's not a very friendly combination. I think I'm not in the LED. No, no. Yeah. So let me just see. That is the LED. I think. Uh, mm. Let me see just here. Okay. I think I am in the LED. Hmm. No, no. No, let's go LAO call. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, it's a little complicated uh, angulation there, so. Mm hmm. <coughs> there. Okay. Yes, now. So we're trying to get into the AD. I okay. think that's LAD, right? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Arocranial. Cranial. Arocranial. Yeah. That is better. Yes. That's good. Okay, puff a little, please. Good. So okay. I'm in the diag there, so I'm going to try to enter the mid LAD. So you think that the eye was <laughs> lesion length, lesion length yeah. okay. So taking a cine here for lesion length, and Fine. that's a 30 millimeter radio opacity. You can see both sides. Our plan is to land proximal to the aneurysm. And uh, I went in the bigger of the two distal branches. A little PVC there, come back. Just a second. Okay. I will probably stay there. What do you say? Okay. Right? Wire wise or, or go mm -hmm, a little. Mm -hmm. okay. And if it goes in septal, then no problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Let me know. Okay. That's good. Okay. okay. All that right. We'll okay. leave it there. Anyway, so. All right. Okay. We'll I was and uh, get some measurements. And I have Fazila here, and Dr. Akasaka is also coming to help. Uh, interpret the imaging at its best? So just for curiosity and to be a provocative, what do you think that the IBUS will show that is going to make you change your approach without having these IBUS images? 
prior to so, the intervention? So that's a very good question. And I think, you know, the pre-IVUS, I find, gives me the most amount of information. If I do IVUS at one point in the procedure, I always like to do it uh, before the beginning of instrumentation uh, with balloons, etc. Uh, <clears throat> what it shows me is obviously, as you all know, the, you know, characteristics of the lesion, the plaque. Uh, I'm not a big fan of length sizing, etc. with IVUS. With OCT, I'm a little bit happier with the length. I don't know how you guys feel. Yeah, I think the motorized pullback, it is uh, because of the resistance and okay. things like that, it's much Fine. more challenging to really, really yeah. be reliable in the length of the lesion. Uh, uh, and okay. if the calcium superficial arc is more than 270, will Perfect. you consider rotablation? Uh, so, yes and no. I think in, in this case, it probably will not change my mind as much. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is in Indian arteries, I like imaging almost 100% of the time when I do it in the U.S. We have a very large Indian community where I live, and there's tremendous negative re uh, you know, remodeling. So they're much smaller than they look. Yeah, this one has a lot of negative remodeling. Like yeah, you know. they're very diabetic vessels, and there I think imaging is uh, almost a mandate, in my opinion. So you have like a 180 degree calcium in one area. Yeah, there's a whole lot of calcium in multiple places. There is like, two, well, no, here you are in the... Okay. Okay. Okay, so that's the proximal LAD where we want it to end. Yes. And we are entering that area now. And um, looks like we could end there, right? Mm. It looks like right a good there. landing zone. Yeah, yeah. it's a good landing zone right about there. And now we should enter the sarcostium and the uh, left main coming up. Very large. It's a very short left main, very red, large. Now the guide, yes. So. So that's a, 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 if you can give us your opinion on the imaging. Okay, yeah, yeah the distal portion is uh, the very normal looking and very big. And mm -hmm. uh, after yes, uh, this yes, ideal landing zone, it, it looks like in s nearly one, two, three, okay, four millimeter, but uh, uh, we have to think about the, uh, uh, yes, uh, the cassette uh, and the, the coronary artery, right? Sometimes uh, it's it not uh, perpendicular, right? So uh, we, we have to pay attention okay. to the overestimation. Here is a region, right? Uh, very, yes, negative remodeling and very eccentric plaque with uh, fibrous and calcium, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. And then uh, here also the negative remodeling mm. compared with the distal landing zone, right? Uh, very fibrous and also the calcium. So the vessel always dilates to the, the normal side. So too much uh, inflation may have uh, some risk of the perforation. Pay attention to the, uh, yeah, uh, this uh, uh, MLA site. And then sure, so yeah. the ectatic area is a little bit oversized there. We want to stay smaller than that, Yeah. right? And what do you think our uh, ideal balloon diameter would be and stent diameter would be in this case? Yeah. I try to measure the proximal, yes, uh, diameter, right? A little bit proximal from here might be the ideal landing zone, right? Yeah. So try to measure, right? One to three point five around, right? Yes. By IBUS, we are always taking account as uh, EEL, right? So uh, uh, lumen is uh, here, four. Right, nearly four. Four, four point three, saying four, so. Yeah. So yeah. if you quarter size it down, then yes, you know, yes. yeah. So what's you know what would you recommend to start with the balloon? Uh, I think this style is uh, three point oh in uh, diameter, and the EEL is uh, right. Which one? This style is. Uh, this cell size is 3.6, and uh, yes, uh, quarter size or half size down might be the three, but the 3.25 should be uh, okay, right? 
So I think, you know, my rule are for one thing I learned in my first trico mm -hmm. is that with Indian vessels, I always downsize by at least a quarter. Quarter, right. When I'm working, even after I get my mm -hmm. measurements from a very reliable source. Yeah. <laughs> so if you recommend three, I would probably want to start with a balloon of 2.5 and All then right. okay. go up from there. Yeah. What yeah. do you think, sir? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, yes, right, yes. right, right. Seems so reasonable. Sam, Sammy. Sammy. Yes, yes, With this kind of a classification, yes. you consider cutting balloon first? What yeah, I'm going to I'm going to try balloon first and see if I could expand it. Uh, Sanjay, Bhai, what's mm. your thought? No, Do you I think we should run the rota blade or or try no, balloon no, first? No, try balloon. Balloon first. Okay. Yeah, I think balloon is first. We might want to go with the NC balloon because of the calcium, right? 2.5 right. by yeah. 20. 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, uh, uh, 2 5 20 NC balloon. Uh, but with the uh, NC uh, balloon, yeah. Dr. Okay, Saga, just a mention. Yes, yes. Sure. The calcium yes. on one side yeah. and the other side a little bit normal. You don't want to inflate too high pressure yes, yes. in an NC balloon. Yeah. So you think cutting balloon is a better option? Yeah, I, I'm just wondering, uh, the, the, there are some eccentric plug and the, the, the normal side. If, mm. if the blade attached to the normal side, up. Uh, some risk of uh, yes, uh, perforation. So in this case, it might be very difficult to treat completely. So we have to accept uh, a decent expansion, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. Don't go for full expansion. Yeah, but do barabar ja. Tamay shanti di swas lejo bas. Two point five fifteen MC merge. Thank you. Ah. <coughs> hmm. Negative. Ready? Okay. Hmm. I got the wire. Okay. So are you doing a pre dilatation in a calcified vessel like this? Sure. Samir, okay. what are the precautions you take for the beginners who are. Little more? A little further, right? Uh, right yes. about there? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. let's go. Uh, well, first of all, I, I go with a balloon that doesn't grow very fast because you get very frequent dog boning, and that's where you perforate is on the edges. Just one second. Floor of Save Career. It looks very good size, actually, very large. Yeah, very it looks very no. This is the final size. Look. Yeah, like. and <laughs> you know, as you saw, if I would have gone by the Iva sizing, it would have been you would be 15. tightening up in bad places by now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. I think Foxy we are good there, right? Foxy will do it. Foxy will do it. Joy, yeah. Joy, yeah. Joy, 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 joy. I think it's uh, okay. Yeah, I think we are decent, we have, right? We have yeah, it looks like the vessel actually grew a little. Yeah, unless yeah, I'm good. looking at a little magnification factor here. So this was a 20 balloon, and our wire showed us that it's a 30 millimeter length. Maybe we should take a 32 or so, right? 30, 32. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or you know, what uh, what stents do we have? So I imagine that you're going to ask Stand. for a 25. I think so. I, you know, I want to go up to 25 with JS and JV, right? We we'll go to 25 at a decent pressure, and. I hope we could show you how the size is very different in the Indian arteries. Very different. You know, and all conventional wisdom fails. One thing if I have learned in 15 years of trico right, is that uh, the sizing of Indian vessels, at least I am not well calibrated. 2.5, 32. 32. Yeah, right. 2.5, you know, my, my eyeballs are calibrated to a different uh, ethnicity of arteries. And even in U.S. with my Indian patients, I keep that in I mind. It's, it's very uh, strange in a way. And I think it has to do with the diabetic metabolic state and the negative re remodeling that is there. But also I think an, an important uh, message is uh, we can always grow the stent. That is um, true. The, the new stents are very forgiving with uh, undersizing to start with. And you can eventually end up uh, appropriately sizing. So there's no no major penalty for undersizing. Exactly. You so know, most ten will give you one millimeter, one point two five millimeter larger least, than the. Yeah. Product. Like and we said earlier, you know, a two o stent will go to three two five, and I think uh, hats off to the engineers. That's very very comforting for the operator. Because when we used to put J and J stent, uh, there was no room for that. You know. By the way, it's also comforting because I have the master next to me. Oh. <laughs> if, if I need a stent, he is doing it. I am coming over here. <laughs> 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 
guess we are all coming. Sanjay Bhai has one of the most finest te technique in the world. <laughs> and I emphasize the word, world. I have yet to see an operator as, as wonderful at coronary work or any endovascular work. I think he deserves a round of applause. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. What do you think of the location, guys? You you yeah. like it? It looks outstanding. Okay, then we will go up here. And uh, one other thing I learned from India, which is very important, is I always watch the balloon grow when I inflate. So I have no predetermined atmospheres in my head. I will look at the balloon and then look at the dial. I used to, I was trained opposite when I, when I learned. <laughs> we look at the dial and then look at the balloon, maybe. Come down, yeah. Go. go very slow. Go very slow go and very gentle. Slow. Yes, uh, I teach all of our fellows uh, the same thing. Uh, little fight coming back, but I, think yeah. I, I, I hope the proximal end of the stent is okay, but we'll uh. find out. Ready? Let's take a ready, picture. Ready? It's fine. Perfect. I think it looks good. It looks good. Okay, now, uh, you know, post dilatation wise, uh, like Dr. Akasaka advised, you know, we don't want to over dilate and size to that aneurysm. You have to, you know, so the proximal end we need to see a little better, right? So yes, let's do yes, an yes. AP caudal. So how large did you, I mean, how, how was the inflation? 12 or what we was it? To 14, right? Something? Can yes, 14. 14. 14. 14. So more 14. or less you already deployed at 2.7. Right. Yes, yes, 2.7. Yeah, ready? Ready. Looks good. Yeah. Uh, should we put a, you know, 3 and NC? And no, no yeah, problem. Right? Let's take a 3O 15 and NC mm. and we will dilate in some key mm. places. And yeah, I agree. You know, again, you know, observing uh, the growth of the balloon angiographically. So that's one of the questions I have, Dr. Aksaka, is when you, uh, you know, downsize by a quarter or 0.5 mm -hmm. with EEL to EEL, mm -hmm. obviously you are adjusting for the compliance of the plaque. Ah, uh, yes, yes. So do you downsize by less amount if the, if the plaque is calcified and by, a, you know, or I mean a bigger amount you, so for example, if you have 3 you know, v ultrasound EEL to EEL, mm -hmm. if it's calcified, mm -hmm. would you go down to 2.5 and if it's soft, would you go to 2.75? Right. It depends on the, the distribution of the calcium, right? The, the, okay. the point is uh, the, the distribution. If there are a circular calcium, we can dilate, mm -hmm. uh, but the Three by eccentric and calcium plug on the other side is very normal. Mm -hmm. It's in a high risk of perforation. If you dilate using a bigger balloon and a higher pressure, right? Ah, so, so it is the one issue. Right. Ha, ha, ha. So it's a uh, straight full of it. Yeah, the guideline recommend uh, the 80 percent, uh, more than 80 percent compared more with, than 80 uh, with yeah, reference area, but uh, it depends. Sometimes we accept uh, the 70, so 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 Go a little forward. Yes. Right? Just a right about there. Okay. This is a good come, good place. Yeah. Come, let me come back a tad. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, come yeah. back here. Yeah, there we go. I think that's settled in a good place. 15. Okay. Yeah. Okay, down. Good. So okay. notice that in India also do a very short inflation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the imaging corroborates good efficacy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Because the okay, in other places you could do a five second inflation, the most people will <laughs> complain. Yeah. 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 Okay, going up. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. But I'm happy because I, I don't have that much of the mm, patience also. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. This is good. 
Yes. I think we're good. We are at the edge of the stent proximally, so going up, and that's a good decent size at 15, 16, 16 atmospheres. Okay, good. I think we have plenty of expansion. Yes. Little ST change. It's a long lesion, some embolization mm -hmm. probably. Okay, ready? The picture looks. Yes, yes. Fine. Okay, I think it looks good. No perforation and uh, pretty uh, adequate expansion. Distal vessel looks okay. Everybody, any comments from the pe pe panel, please? Let's go. Uh, let's go. AP coral. Why are can't you want to do IVUS? We want to do post IVUS. Okay, we can do post IVUS. Okay, that will we be can interesting. Do post now, okay, let me ask all of you. Uh, how many of you will change your mind based on IVUS, or will you be just using that information if it looks good? And if it doesn't look perfect, would you just say, okay, I'm happy with the angiogram, I'm going to leave it be? I think because you have the step up and a step down, I, well, not a step down because you have the aneurysm, but you do have the step up proximally. So I am with the amount of calcification that we saw prior to the stenting, I think the, the IVUS would have corroborate, but I, w I don't think in this case it would have changed my mind about right. the final result. So, you know, escalation will probably not be the case here, right? You will just uh, be corroborating, not escalating based on IVUS. Yes. Well, I mean, the, I think cases got to be individual, but if you look at all the IVUS study, right, the optimal ah, study, not you have to use an optimal yeah. result based on the IVUS. Ah. Otherwise, it's no point. I think um, uh, in optimized IVUS study, mm. then they compare when you do an IVUS and non-IVUS. When you do mm. the IVUS, you must that follow up, mm, good, right? but but more follow up the end of of the IVUS yeah. criteria. Okay. Otherwise, what else? What else? the Fine. target failure away will be still very high. Start. Dr. Akasaka, yes. right? Yes, yes, you, you are right, yes. They compare the, the optimal result and suboptimal result group, and the optimal result group is a very wonderful uh, long-term result. However, suboptimal result, the benefit is uh, very small. Right, you are right, completely right. So, but uh, it, it depends on the case, as you said. We have to think about uh, the tailor-made uh, treatment because the distribution of the plug is different and uh, the type of Prague is different. So how to obtain the optimal result? So aneurysm we do not mm. have a uniform uh, identification. No inside yes. the right. Do you agree? We are just passing the aneurysm into the Yes, stand. I think we all agree with that. And, and I always concern when you say the optimal result that, that do great. I mean, mo most of those patients, you were able to achieve the optimal result. So that means that the patients were easier to begin with and the non-optimal might not be as easy to begin with. But distally, you do have a little bit under expansion, but I think it's because of the aneurysm. Eh? Yes, right. absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. But yeah, overall, the area should be good. Yeah, I think the stent expansion looks good and even apposition actually looks better than I expected. And even the, the, the geometry, the symmetry looks pretty good for calcium. Right. Right, Dr. Asaka, what yes, do you think? Yes, I think, yes. The circular uh, yes. symmetry yeah, is better yeah. than I expected. Yeah. I was expecting a very, right. you know, star-like star yeah. lumen. Yeah, yeah. I, I also uh, the wondering about the, uh, the, the symmetricity because the plug is very eccentric. Exactly. But uh, the, the symmetricity is very wonderful, acceptable, right? Yep. Yeah. Would but anybody post dilate right there or leave it be? Uh, leave alone, yeah? I think Looks leave, it, leave it be, right? Yeah. I think it's, yeah, right. I agree 100%. Right, right on the proximal, it looked like you are a little bit more underexpanding than I would have thought based on geography. Yeah, I think I, I would leave it be for now. Uh, Sanjay, what's your thought? Mm, I think we can leave. Leave it, right? Yeah. Leave. The STs have resolved completely. They are better. So we will uh, take the wire back and mm -hmm. do a sure. picture and then we'll do circumflex wiring, right? Yes. Or let me just go in the circumflex anyway and then we'll do a, a, a picture so we save contrast, right? Hmm. Um, puff, 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 okay. Okay. Yes. It's fine. What else? Yes, good. This is a good step. Yeah. Yes. Okay, wire is in at home, as we call it. Okay, <laughs> ready? Okay. Picture. Yeah.
चल रेडी ओके सो द एलईडी लुक्स गुड एंड वी आर इन द सर्कल लीजन नाउ सर्कल लीजन यू नो इज वेरी एक्सेंट्रिक एंड इन इन सम व्यूज यू सी इट मोर सिवियर देन इट लुक्स हियर and so the decisions already made to revascularize it he is young and we are going for total revascularization uh should we ivas the circ or or should we just you know go uh with the lesion doesn't seem to be very severe do you right? want to do ffr yeah question i will leave it up to <laughs> and sanjay what do you think <laughs> i knew that would have yes. come that question i know yeah we were expecting it yes, yesterday even the varche sir ha what do i look at the circ ha Okay 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 good good uh, okay I, we you can know. take several another view yeah let's do another let's do a, a, a cranial view right? cranial view yeah let's do ap Hello. cranial and see it might open up that area mm uh -huh. okay okay ready yes hello hello no, cranial hello huh? cranial yeah hello cranial okay ready mm huh? pretty ready Yeah, I, think, I think there is a there is a shelf like lesion there in that area so uh, uh you know i don't know what the panel's opinion is about ffr and circumflex uh as far as you know how many times do you find a clinically significant lesion that is ffr negative in the in the circumflex almost zero <laughs> <laughs> I think circumflex for this two circumflex most like most times Exactly. I think the value of FFR is mostly in the LAD borderline lesions. Balloon lesion uh, can straight di straight. Oh, direct. Okay, we'll go 25 and we'll go there. 2 3 3 by short. Okay, 3 by kilo. Shortest. Mm. Shortest. 15 we'll go. 15. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to put a direct stand 3 15. 3 by 15. Yes. Promos. Let me ask uh, you know that Dr. Akasaga's opinion on uh, lesions in circumflex which Why are uh, hemodynamically obviously significant no, yeah. but FFR negative. Negative yes yes. What is the is there any data on the outcome of those lesions? Uh yeah uh, there are uh, uh, yeah I think uh, not so much data but uh, we compare uh, the borderline FFR not only a CX but uh, long term for up Uh, the patient need to have an intervention so i would like to say if the ffr value is border do not hurry to treat but uh, anyway in the, in the uh, future we have to treat right so should we have a different threshold for circumflex should be 0.85 or 0.88 as opposed to led is 0.8 i i do not know the, the real data there are uh, only uh, total uh, amount of data i think uh, there are no difference between uh, lad lcx and lrc at the moment right now yeah we yeah. have the same criteria yeah, for yeah, right. but you know is that reasonable and should we have a trial which looks at <laughs> a different threshold yeah we we do not have an enough data we so don't have we, we, right we, now, we yeah. do have the data right okay. so yeah yeah little more further right yes yes but another data show that we try to measure the three a no, vessel no, ff uh, uh, guiding uh, bars after bar treatment the if the, the three vessel ff high yes yes yes, yes. 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 we take it so uh, event rate so okay. come back it looks right? good means so uh, uh, okay. 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 the epic order one guy in the whole order better right thank you Hmm. So you got to come back at the end. Yeah, we come back just a, s a smidge and then okay right right uh, about uh, there yes. okay. Okay, Let's take a picture. Sine, yes. Little Maybe more a little, little further more. in. Yes, yes. 1 mm. Okay, probably Perfect. we are there. The guide is out. Yes. Let's still further a little bit. Let me see. Okay, okay we are there. Where are you, Samadhani? Yeah, little back, back little yeah. back <laughs> so splitting the difference okay. is a hard thing okay we take shoot okay. take okay picture yes and this afternoon i try to show the the comparison uh, between uh, little FFR back guided right versus oct guided pci uh, i privately uh, 
think uh, they are a complementary uh, method, like, yes. so I cannot okay. imagine. Uh, really really uh, really really yeah, it is they, they did a very uh, competitive Perfect, method, huh? uh, so and then uh, yes. they yeah. did, and uh, uh, by OCT, slowly. the incidence of PCR yeah. increased, yeah. and uh, yes, FFR, if you use an FFR, the FR is increased, therefore, initially, and the... Yes, early period result, there are no significant difference, and if you use an OCT, the cost will increase. However, 30 months after FFR guided PCI, the incident, uh, clinical incidence of the, the maize is much higher than the OCT guide. Right. It is a very interesting report. I will show you the in the afternoon. Right. Okay. It's a nice result. Okay. I think we got nice negative residual there on both sides. Everybody agree? Yeah. Epicranial. Yeah, wait, let's do a cranial and then we will get done and go to the next room. I think we are almost ready there. Mm, yes. Okay. Fine? Yeah, it looks good. Outflow looks good. The full wire. Okay, well, thank you again, everybody, for your opinions and uh, help. And thank you, Dr. Asuka and Fazila. Thank you. For Congratulations. A good result. Right, yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.